Welcome to Listen by Jean Ginsberg. This audio experience and podcast is all about social media, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, and interviews with top entrepreneurs in the digital and social space. I am your host, Jean Ginsberg, digital marketing expert, number one best selling author, and award winning entrepreneur. I will be sharing with you strategies, tips, and tactics on how to grow your business and your social media following. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to Listen by Jean Ginsberg. And this week we're going back to the archives with our my interview with Milos Sokor from Why Soft Ventures from a couple of years ago. Milos was very kind to be on the show twice. And next week we're going to be featuring Milos again with our most recent update about Why Soft Ventures. From the episode from a couple of years ago, we talk about hardware and software companies in Europe. And Milos's advice to companies who want to work, who are looking for funding and want to work with VCs. And what is it like for the VC and the other end when they're looking at the companies that they're investing in? So I hope that you enjoy this episode and then stay tuned for the episode for next with next uh, for next week with Milos Sokor and the updates and the changes and the new things that have been going on with Bysoft Ventures. Hi, everybody. Jean Ginsburg here, digital marketing expert, and I have a very exciting guest today. We have Milos Sokor. He's the managing director of Ysoft Ventures. How's it going today? It's going great. How are you? I am doing excellent, um, and I'm very excited that you're here and talking to our audiences about your experiences, your VC background, and yeah, like, I'd like to learn more about what you have done in the past and how you got into the VC space. Okay, so uh, actually the whole thing uh, around money started uh, with my career when I was in the United States. I spent 10 years there between 99 uh, and 2009. And I actually worked in the banking industry uh, where I sort of moved from personal banking all the way to corporate banking. But I ended up uh, in the end in risk management where we were uh, taking care of the bad loans. So I actually met a lot of businesses that have gone south. And I have experienced what the founders and banks and um, all the stakeholders in the deal had to do. And uh, it taught me a lot about, about risk and money and how it's, how it's used in business. And when I returned to Europe, uh, almost by a mistake, I got a job as the, uh, they called it the chief consultant of, a, uh, of the largest technological incubator in the Czech Republic here. And I, or actually I grew it to the largest technological incubator. Uh, it wasn't the largest when I joined, but we had over hundred companies in there and uh, was managing quite a bit of uh, also office space. And so I was always using with startups, uh, my uh, risk awareness uh, that, I, that I learned from banking and I sort of started mixing it. And then um, uh, toward the end, the opportunity came to, uh, to run a venture capital fund for Wysoft Corporation, who actually started as a startup in that incubator some 15 years ago. Uh, so I always knew about Wysoft Corporation. And then when I heard that they want to do their fund, I started talking to the CEO and we made the deal pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And we started Wysoft Ventures, which is the venture capital arm of Wysoft Corporation. So that's, uh, that's how it started. Oh, very interesting. So tell us about Wysoft Ventures and what kind of companies do you invest in? Okay, so Viso Ventures is kind of a unique venture capital arm uh, because we don't necessarily invest into companies that we that Viso would later acquire, which is usually what uh, uh, VC funds, uh, corporate VC funds do. Uh, and also, we have opened up the fund to external investors because once we here in Czech Republic um, focused on investing into companies that combine hardware and software, uh, which is what Weiss of Corporation does, and we think we're pretty good at it. We build a global company that has a, its core product that connects hardware and software, and it's sort of unique for a VC investor to go into hardware, especially here in Central Europe. Uh, we don't know uh, any other VCs nearby that would be solely um, focused on, on hardware. Uh, so we had quite a strong pipeline and we couldn't finance it ourselves. So we opened it up to external investors, which is also not very usual for a corporate fund. Usually they all keep it in house, but we have uh, external partners in our fund as well. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. 
So you've been involved with uh, Y Stock Ventures for a little bit. So tell us about uh, a company that um, is part of your portfolio that maybe has an interesting mission or has interesting products or something that stands out for you. Okay. Um, so Ysoft Corporation, the, 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 the mother company, has been doing Internet of Things for the last 15 years. We are in the print management industry and we actually build our own hardware to be able to operate multifunction printers with our software. So we have been doing IoT since the year 2000. And when we decided to invest into, uh, into startups, uh, we wanted to leverage this know-how that we have, sort of building a globally operating company uh, out of an underdog market, Brno Czech Republic, not the best starting line to, line to, uh, to build a global company. But we have, I would say, unique know-how of how to do it. And we decided, hey, let's invest into similar startups that combine hardware, software, and let's, let's help them you know, reach the global markets. Uh, so probably the best uh, performing company in our uh, portfolio is called Savio. And what they do is um, uh, indoor localization. They use special technology on uh, using ultra wideband technology and they have hardware software. They sort of have a, an indoor GPS system. So it's used a lot by, uh, by factories, by logistics centers, uh, quite a bit in the automotive industry. Whenever you need to digitize anything indoor, uh, you use their product basically, we say. Uh, and we are convinced that this is the fundamental technology for industry 4.0 uh, because you you gain live data of what's going on inside your space uh, indoor and then you can work with the data and uh, use other applications to maybe improve your processes or whatever whatever you need to do uh, with the data but they provide you the fundamentals basically oh that's an interesting company absolutely yes so is it the hardware or the software or both that they do it's it's the combination and they have been pretty uh, successful because uh, it's been now not even three years since the investment and they're already selling in over 50 countries, which is for companies from our part of the world, this is, this is past. It's, it's quite a bit to achieve this with like a 20 people team. And they also partnered up with some of the largest uh, companies uh, in the world, like Fortune 500 companies that have opened up their partner networks. And uh, they just recently did a big deal for a Volkswagen factory uh, nearby here and um, it was sort of a trial run and Volkswagen may be installing this technology in uh, in many other plants that they have around Europe. Uh, they test like new processes before they implement them. So automotive has been very strong vertical and uh, and the 50 countries, um, you know, they, they, they uh, created a partner network that they sell through. So um, you obviously have to train your partners to deploy the hardware. There's quite a bit of work involved with hardware, especially if you need to logistically send it worldwide. It's a lot harder to deploy than, than like a software product, basically. So it's, a, it's quite a bit of achievement for them to be operating in so many countries. Yeah, absolutely. After, especially after just three years, it sounds like that's a, definitely the next step in in the in the industry um, is this kind of technology. So that's fantastic that they're doing so well after just three years and um, being in business. So let's, uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's um, that's uh, an interesting company what to we, definitely have in your portfolio. What we actually do with our companies, uh, we use similar strategy that YSOP has used. We always find the giant in the respective industry because YSOP has grown through uh, Kanika Minolta, which is uh, one of the largest uh, producers of uh, printers and printing services worldwide. And uh, if you're a small company out of Central Europe, you just need to uh, jump on the shoulder of a giant like that, uh, tap into their sales network, provide your product, and obviously good support uh, to these partners worldwide. And uh, this helps you scale quite fast. And uh, th we use the same approach with our companies. We always look for the giant in their industry. Mm -hmm. uh, jump on their shoulders and uh, and go for the ride. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's a that's a good strategy to implement because we you always need to kind of have a good partner with you, right, in order to grow. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, that's a good point. Um, great. And so the other question I had, switching gears a little bit, was about social media. So you know, someone who me who's someone who does digital marketing um, and work with, with a lot of companies when it comes to social media. So how are you using social media at YSoft Ventures to get your message across? 
Uh, YSL Ventures itself, uh, I wouldn't say puts too much emphasis or under into social media. We are more under the umbrella of the whole corporation, which is run by our marketing department. Mm -hmm. We are heavy on uh, our companies to be using social media, uh, obviously quite a bit. Um, um, the approach that we have in the B2B business is that you run your campaigns as proof points for the claims that you are making to your clients or to your partners. So you basically use a lot of case studies and show, show the world how your product is used. So we put a lot of emphasis on that and obviously use different strategies for different social media or we tell the companies to use that. Uh, YSO Ventures itself, uh, obviously some activities on, on LinkedIn and the usual stuff, but uh, we uh, work more with the companies and have them use the social media because our our, our pipeline be, being so unique in the hardware world, uh, our pipeline is actually quite strong. We always have uh, more uh, good deals than, uh, than we can finance. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have, uh, the problem would probably be more on the fundraising uh, side as, uh, as, uh, than, than on, the, on the pipeline side. There's quite a few, I would say, good deals here in Centurial when it comes to hardware, especially, especially in Brno. Okay. And how are your companies using social media? Just some examples if you have one or two. Uh, all the CEOs are very active on Twitter, very active on LinkedIn. And like I said, usually they, um, they, it's, it's all proof points. It's always them showing being in the field, being at different conferences. Um, uh, there's one company we have in the portfolio, Lumitrix. They create uh, hardware, these projectors that do video mapping uh, out, out, outdoor and indoor. And they have very catchy uh, Facebook campaigns. They have, uh, I, I think they have like, when they do a video, they would have over 100,000 views, uh, which again, for a small company, but it's very, it's very, um, very focused on their target uh, audience. And they, I think they get like 30, uh, legible requests on their website every day just from the social media campaign which is which is more they can handle in their small team right now so that would that would be a good example of them uh, using social media quite strong oh absolutely and, um, yeah yeah great um well uh before we wrap up i have one last question so you've uh, of course have uh, have uh, been involved with a lot of startups in the past so um, for, for founders who might be listening to this uh, video or, or listening to this podcast, what are uh, some pieces of advice that you would offer startups who are looking for funding? <laughs> uh, we might have a different outlook on this here, here in Central Europe. Obviously, it's, it's a little bit different from the United States. We have, we have, we have different uh, way different valuations and way different way it works. I always say, you know, having spent 10 years in the United States, I, uh, I can honestly say that uh, somebody who grew up in the United States starting selling lemonade in the neighborhood is always a better salesman than your typical Central European. But we are trying to change that here. So it would be sort of the overall approach on how you, how you sell and present yourself. But I, I, I would say the number one thing that I have yet to see from a startup is when you come to an investor, they uh, very rarely or almost never think about your business as the investor. They tell you about their product, about the problem they solve, how much money they need, but they don't give you the case because you are the investor, you give them money and you wanna, you wanna make a return on it or, or, or profit on it. And they, I always miss the slide. This is how I'm gonna use your million or two uh, dollars, what I'm gonna do with it, and this is how much you will get in the end those calculations you'll sort of have to do yourself and when you start doing them that's when usually the deal sort of falls apart because it's it's something new for the company to consider all they know is that they need their investment but they don't think uh, about the ways how to how to return it or how many times over uh, they should return the investment and um it, I, I guess it is a lot about numbers. We want uh, the founders and the companies to be able to explain the business through numbers. That's always the hardest part. We have flashy presentations. Uh, the product is pretty good. But once we start talking money and they always tell you the product is, is done and ready for the market and then you look at the P&L and uh, it will be the heaviest on the R&D side. So you wonder what they need to be developing if the product is ready. So they usually don't tell you something. So we, we like to basically dig into numbers. And my advice would be 
uh, investors are number people. I mean, they, they work with numbers, they, they like them. So uh, if you're talking to them, it has to make sense. It has to be, um, you, it, it has to be a profitable investment for them. So also focus on the business of the investor because they're in it to, to obviously uh, make money on the deal as well. So I would focus on that. That's a very good point. I feel like that, yes, it's so many times that it's like, uh, I'm the startup, you know, it's about me, but they don't really think about what it is to, to be on the other side of, of the table, right? So uh, it's, it happens so often in marketing in general, or just presenting in general, where it's like, I, it's, you know, I'm the company, I'm the one who's getting the money, or I'm the one who's selling, but you don't really think about the other person who's on the other side of the equation, right? So, or the other company is, on the other side of the equation. Which goes back to the B2B DNA that Ysoft and Yso Ventures has. We know, um, obviously, you have to understand the business that you're selling to, what their needs are, and, and how to make the money, save their time, or, or whatever they need to, to spend money on your product. So we always look at it this way. We are not very good with B2C. We don't know why people buy blue or red cars. What may, how do they make that decision? But we understand businesses and their needs and how to sell them. So maybe... We like to be viewed as such, uh, and when these startups talk to us, they should be, look at us at, at, as a business. What, what what is our business model, and and target exactly that uh, when they when they pitch to us. And and I never see that. <laughs> That's true. It is. I, I feel like that is pretty rare in general, whether it's in the United States or outside of the United States. Uh, in you know, in, in Central Europe, I feel like yeah, that that is a pretty rare concept where they actually have a slide about like, well, what about the investor company like what is it going to do to well, what's the point right and, and i think it's so i think it would be important for them to kind of make the case right to be uh to get ahead of the of the numbers right before before the investor company starts crunching the numbers and seeing that maybe this is not the best um best investment they can actually get ahead of it and say you know this is what we think will will be the reason why you would want to invest with us exactly exactly so that's a, that's an interesting point and i haven't really heard that but very often, so that's uh, I think that's a really good piece of advice for anybody who's uh, who's a startup founder who's listening to this is to <laughs> definitely get a include a slide like that in your presentation. So, well, uh, thank you very much, Milos. Um, that is a, a, a good interview that we just had. I really learned a lot about what you do, and also uh, thank you for the advice um, for anybody who's listening to this. Um, this is, I think, very helpful for startups. Um, so how can um, our audiences get in touch with you? Well, uh, uh, we talked about social media. So obviously, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, all of that. Uh, Wisoventures.com is the website with the direct contact uh, uh, for me. So uh, it would be hard uh, not to be able to get in touch with me. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, you my name. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you again for being here. Milos Sokor, Managing Director of YSoft Ventures. We're uh, very pleased that you decided to join us and share some of your wisdom. Thank you so much. I thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you.